Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Nobody gets everything. <laughs> But we all get something. And our job is to find out what our something is and put it to good use in our life. Now listen to me, without comparing what we have to what somebody else has. That's a big thing. started this morning in the first service about the three parables that are found in Matthew chapter 25. And they are the parable of the ten virgins, the five wise and the five foolish. We found out this morning that the five that were foolish were foolish because they didn't do anything extra. The wise ones took their lamps, but they took extra oil just in case they had to wait a little longer than They thought they would. Made a couple of good points about even why people are late. They, don't, they plan for perfection. They don't plan for anything to happen that could delay them. And so we need to be prepared. We need to be planned. And, and we're living in very difficult times right now where we need to, the Bible says, watch and pray. And that really means to live carefully. Be careful how you live. The devil roams about like a lion roaring in fierce hunger, seeking whom he may devour, but you don't have to let it be you. But that doesn't mean that there's absolutely nothing for you to do. We're partners with God. It's just about learning how to hear from God and doing the right thing at the right time. Lisa talked about praise and worship. Sometimes that's all God wants you to do. When you're in a battle, you've done everything you can do, and he just wants you to praise and worship him. Maybe there's something uh, that you need to take care of in your life that's got a door open to the enemy. Maybe there's some bitterness or, or you know, sometimes you can have an offense in your heart, and it's been there so long that you don't even really know it's there, and it's bothering you, but God can show us things like that. So I always believe in asking God, what's wrong? Is there something that you want me to do or do you want me just to wait on you and just praise you? We, we can win our battles if we know how to fight like a Christian. Amen? And so the message really in these three talents is kind of all the same. It's about doing what you should do when you should be doing it and not putting things off and losing your reward. Now, we don't earn our way into heaven. We don't earn salvation. It's a free gift given completely by the grace of God, and it's offered to all. Jesus has already paid for your salvation, so if you haven't received Christ yet, there's a free gift waiting for you today that you can have for the asking. You don't have to go out and try to make yourself better in order to deserve it. It's just a free gift waiting for you. But once a person is born again, they receive a new nature. We receive the nature of God, we receive the spirit of God, and we receive the heart of God. In Ezekiel, the Bible says that he takes the stony, hard, cold heart out of us and gives us a heart of flesh, one that is sensitive to the touch of God. And so I believe that anybody who is truly born again, and that doesn't mean you just go to church on Sunday, that means that you are, you, your life is all about God now. You've turned away from sin, turned away from being in love with the girl, the world, and you want what God wants for your life. And so there are good works to consider James said, faith without works is dead. We don't work for our salvation, but if we are truly saved, you cannot have the heart of God and not want to do good things. Amen? So if you think you're saved, but you just don't care anything about other people, 
and you better back up and do some checking because it's not just a matter of saying a certain prayer at a certain time and joining a church and going to church once a week. This is about receiving Christ and letting him change us from glory to glory and continuing to grow spiritually. I'm still growing spiritually. I'm learning all the time. And that's what we need to have the attitude that we want to do. But the devil wants to stop us. In case you haven't figured it out, he hates you. <laughs> Just to put it as plain as I know how to put it. And anything, anytime that you try to do something good, Paul said, when I want to do good, evil always comes. So there's a little bit of a, of a fighting the devil, so to speak. But we have already won. We just know how, we just need to know how to fight right. And these parables, all three of them, teach us that it's very important to use what God has given us. The, the, the ten virgins was the first parable, and the next one is the parable of the talents, and the third one is the parable of the sheep and the goats. And we're going to get through these last two in this service. We all receive from God what we're able to handle. We don't all get what somebody else has got. Maybe you're jealous of somebody who's got a lot more money than you and you just don't understand it. But there is a possibility, no matter what you think, that if you had what they have, it would be more than you could handle and it could take you away from God. Do you know that? And you don't want to know that, do you? <laughs> Let me tell you something. Money has power. Position has power. There's a lot of people, worldly people, whose lives are ruined by becoming famous or becoming rich. And so you might finagle around in the world and get more than you really can handle and it end up just ruining your life. But as God's child, if you're trusting God to give you what's right for you, it may not always, well, let's just say it won't always be the same as what somebody else has. Everybody gets something, but nobody gets everything. So it's kind of silly to be jealous of what somebody else has because if that's what God wanted you to have, then you would have that. So we need to be glad for other people. And let's don't just pray for what we want. Let's ask God to give us what we can handle and still keep him first in our lives. Could I say that again? Let's ask God to give us what we can handle and still keep him number one in our lives. I think sometimes about Rachel and Leah, two women in the Bible that were sisters, and Jacob loved Rachel. She was a beautiful woman, and he loved her, and he worked for his uncle Laban for seven years to get her as a bride. And she had a sister, Leah, and the Bible says of Rachel that she was beautiful to behold. And of Leah, it says she had weak, dull eyes. Now, I guess that means she wasn't very pretty. <laughs> it's just kind of a nice way of saying she was not the good-looking sister. But the thing that's interesting is Rachel had a difficult time becoming pregnant and bearing children, but Leah could just have them one after the other, one after the other. And so back in those things, they did things a little different. And he, he worked for seven years for Rachel, and then he got uh, tricked and deceived. And on the wedding night, they got him drunk, and he woke up the next morning and had Leah. The weak-eyed, dull-eyed <laughs> Leah. But Leah could give Jacob sons and daughters right away. He worked another seven years and got Rachel. 
But it was many, many, many years before Rachel ever had a child, and then she finally had Joseph, and then she had Benjamin. And I get a lot out of that because I, I look at it like nobody gets everything, <laughs> but we all get something. And our job is to find out what our something is and put it to good use in our life. Now listen to me, without comparing what we have to what somebody else has. That's a big thing. Because here's the thing, it doesn't matter if what you have or can do seems big or little to you or to the world, the only thing that God holds us accountable for is to do the most we can with what he's given to us. And if we do that, the janitor in the building gets the same reward as the CEO of the company. God never expects us to do anything he hasn't given us the ability to do. So maybe a few of you could just calm down today and stop comparing yourself with other people and tormenting yourself, wishing that you were something you're not or that you have something you don't. And I'm not gonna stop till you clap on that because that was good. Well, I wish I looked like you. But you know, it's hard to look at Lisa up here and not wish you had her waist. <laughs> it's like, my goodness. I think the top of my leg's bigger than her waist is. <laughs> but you know what? I've learned a long time ago that it's just total waste of time to be jealous of what somebody else has. That's never gonna help you get what they've got. So the parable of the talents, Matthew 25, 14, again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. And this is exactly what God has done with us. I don't know if you know it or not, but Jesus has entrusted us with his reputation. Think of that responsibility. Do you know you may be the only Jesus that your neighbors will ever see? So what kind of a Jesus are they seeing? Are they seeing somebody with a bumper sticker on their car? Or are they seeing somebody that's got the good fruit of the Spirit being displayed in your life? We're not owners of anything, we're stewards. Everything that we have is a gift from God and what he gives us, we need to invest, take good care of, and give him a good return. From the beginning of Genesis, the Bible says, be fruitful and multiply. <laughs> Don't just give me back what I've given you. Go out there and put my gift to work. God gave me a mouth, and I have a gift of communication. That is my gift. I am a good communicator. I seem to be able to make my point fairly easy in a practical way that people can understand. Now, I'll be honest with you, I'm not extremely intelligent. I'd say I've got average intelligence. I'm not dumb, but I'm intelligent. Somewhat intelligent. And uh, all right, you know who Chris Kane is? All right, Chris, she is brilliant. She is very smart. Always got real high grades in school. Well, I wasn't like that. But I got to give the high school graduation speech. See, I could always talk. <laughs> and so I talk. And I let other people do what they can do. And when God, you know, I used to sit out there and I'd be jealous of somebody who had a great voice. I wish I could sing like that. I wish I had hair like that. I wish, I wish, I wish. And really, God puts gifts in other people for us to enjoy them, not to be jealous of them. Because if we're jealous of somebody else's gift, see, you're enjoying my gift this weekend, but it's making me tired. 
I mean, by the time I go home, you'll go home. Oh, huh, there, that train in my garage. Huh, boy, not ever good. I'm going to go. <laughs> Jesus, am I still alive? So it's silly to be jealous of other people. The gift that's in them is for you to enjoy. So to one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one. And I love this in verse 15, each according to his ability. And you don't have to feel bad about yourself because your ability is not what somebody else's is. You're not responsible for anything except what God has given you to be responsible for. Amen. If a pastor is watching this by TV and you, you've pastored a church that's got 150 people and you've been pastoring it for 40 years and here you look at this church on TV, Joel Osteen's church, and you know, he didn't even want to preach. And God just <laughs> pushed it on him and the church just grew like crazy and now he's got this big arena, it seats 16,000 people and they have multiple services on the weekend. Well, how easy would it be to think, well, God, what's wrong with me? Why do I have to just deal with these same 150 <laughs> people year after year after year? You know what? Because that's what God has assigned to you. And this is what God has assigned to Joel. And the thing is, is if you try to do what Joel's doing, all it's going to do is make you unhappy. And he couldn't do what you're doing if he tried because God's got a different anointing on him. You know, this is why Dave and I get along good in this relationship that we have, even though normally the situation would be reversed where he'd be up here and I'd be down there. And he had a conversation with God about this in the beginning because he really didn't want to to be in ministry. And he really didn't understand why God chose me to teach and not him. But Dave's smart. He gets things quick. And he's, uh, he's big on being happy and being peaceful. How many of you are big on being happy and being peaceful? Well, so Dave likes it so much that he'll make whatever change and adjustment he needs to make really quick to keep it. So the things that were happening in him we're not making him happy. And God told him, if you will do what you're responsible for, you'll always have joy. This is what I've called her to do. This is what I've called you to do. You'll both be happy if you both do what you're supposed to do. And you know, really the bottom line is it's none of our business why God chooses one for one thing and another for somebody else. All we need to do is be sweet little sheep, which we're gonna learn about today, the sheep and the goats and just do the part that God has given you. Do you see how you can relax if you stop trying to be something you're not? Just think about it. It's okay. It's just okay. If you scrub floors your whole life, you can be happy scrubbing floors if that's what God's called you to do. Amen? I mean, I actually know this woman, she loves to clean. I'm like, how could you love to clean? <laughs> Darlene Check said to me one day, don't you just love to cook in your time off? I said, no. <laughs> what, you don't love to cook? I said, no, <laughs> I don't love to cook. I love to have somebody cook and I'll eat it. <laughs> All right. Now, the man who received five bags of gold went at once. There you go. He's not the procrastinator we talked about this morning. He went at once and put his money to work, and he gained five more bags. So also, the one who had two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. God entrusts us with talents, abilities, wealth, his reputation. And unbelievers and skeptics look at us to see if the claims about Jesus are real. He gives each according to his ability. And I'll tell you what people want more than anything in this world. They want peace and they want joy. 
And that's the main thing that they should see consistent in any believer's life is peace, even in the midst of a storm, and joy that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> see, you don't have to have a lot of something to be happy. Money doesn't make you happy. Sometimes it can make you very unhappy. Do you know that everything you own is something else you've got to take care of? Yeah, well. <laughs> God won't give us more than we can handle, and we should never be jealous of somebody else who has more. We think they have more than what we do. Whatever God has given you, whether it's a blessing or a challenge or a responsibility, God has given you the ability to handle it. God always gives you grace for your place. If you have a special needs child, I'm sure that challenges your life, but God will give you grace for that place. If you're in a marriage that's not yet what, quite what you want it to be and it's hard and challenging and you're married to an unbeliever or somebody that was a believer and fell away from God, but you believe that it's what God has assigned you. What if Dave wouldn't have married me? I wouldn't be here doing what I'm doing because I didn't need somebody to preach to me. I needed somebody to live Jesus in front of me. And that's what he did. And eventually it changed me. So God will give you the grace for your place. So it's pretty obvious to see why he gave the first man five bags of gold and the last man only one because the guy that got the most did the most with it and God already knew that he would be like that. So do the most you can with what God has given you and stop being jealous of people that you think have more than you do because really you both just have what you can handle and that's the thing that's important. Jesus taught us in the parable of the talents that if you use the gifts and abilities that the Lord has given you for His glory and don't waste them and especially don't envy what He has given to someone else, He will bless you. And yes, yeah, some of you are saying, I don't know if I have those gifts and talents. You do. God has put special things in you. But if you're too busy looking at someone else's, you may be missing your own. You see, God always gives us grace for our place. Cute little rhyme, but what that means is God God gives us something special and he gives us the grace and the help that we need to use it. It's in you today. So get into God's word. There is so much that he tells us about how to handle ourselves, how to handle our talents, how to be working well with other people. And so when you do this, when you look at what Jesus said in the parables, we learn so much. Zitten wereldwijd vast. It's a hostile territory prison. And I'm speaking proof of that. Zij die achter zulke muren leven zijn mensen. En Jezus vraagt ons om naar hen om te kijken. I'm here for third degree burglary. I have a lengthy sentence of 400 months. The judge looked at me and said, I'm going to sentence you to spend the rest of your natural life plus 20 years behind these prison walls. A lot of people don't have family here. So they feel forgotten. There's not a lot of people beating the door down to get in here to see us. Here you go. God bless you. That outreach of the hand to touch their lives in a personal way, to, to come visit them, to, to see that somebody is really thinking about them, that somebody cares for them on the outside. You're giving to people that really are like at the bottom of the totem pole. And with your giving, that, uh, that's actually bringing somebody up. It's the fact that you thought about us, even if it was just to come by and have prayer. We just feel loved. 
you know, that we're not pieces of garbage, you know, um, thrown away, um, that somebody does value us still, and that there is hope, there's hope for us. Tot nu toe hebben we meer dan 3600 gevangenissen bezocht. Zijn er meer dan 3 miljoen cadeautasjes uitgedeeld. En meer dan 139.000 gevangenen hebben voor hun leven met Jezus gekozen. You know, the Word of God teaches us that if we are willing to share what we have, God can multiply that and make it into a lot more than what we started with. So please share. Help ons om andere mensen te kunnen helpen. Bel ons 026 20 22 100 of ga naar joyce-meijer.nl slash partner. Elk gebed en elke donatie telt. Samen veranderen we de wereld. Well, you certainly don't have to look very hard these days to find things to worry about. If you turn on the news for even five minutes, you can feel like the world is just spinning out of control. That's why I'm so excited about my new devotional, Trusting God Day by Day. These devotions will help you change your focus from your circumstances to the truth that's in God's Word. You know, it's time for us to enter into the peace that God has made available to us where we can enjoy our lives. And that comes only from trusting God day by day. Begin je dag met God met de 365 overdenkingen voor het hele jaar. Bestel het boek God Vertrouwen van dag tot dag nu via onze website joyce-meijer.nl of bel 026 20 22 100. Onze klantenservice staat graag voor je klaar. Heb je een vraag of wil je een bestelling doorgeven? Bel ons op. Telefoonnummer 026 20 22 100.